Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California and Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. And today we're going to take a look at the status of El Nino versus La Nina coming up here as we start to move into the fall of 2024 and eventually winter and then into spring of 2025. So right now, technically we are in neutral conditions for Nino 3.4 across the equatorial Pacific. We have dramatically cooled things down across Nino 1 two, three, and now on into 3.4. And that is just a sign that we're moving into the neutral conditions and eventually will result in most likely La Nina conditions as we go through the fall and winter upcoming here as we move on into 2025. So again, we're in the La Nina watch right now. And again, neutral conditions, El Nino is going to be officially gone. If not this month here, it may technically be classified as an El Nino for the month of May, but it, this is just academic at this point because we are on, it is on its way out. And you can see Nino 3.4 dropping down dramatically since we went through December, probably peaking late in November there. And up against the coast of South America, you can see the upwelling and the below normal temperatures starting to emerge. More on that here in a moment. But again, just a technicality here, El Nino may be qualified in here for May, but then quickly we're going to be moving towards these neutral conditions and then La Nina will be upon us as we move into September, October, November, December, and January as we move on in to 2025. So looking at this is a Canadian seasonal model, but this captures what's coming up here pretty well. And you can see that cold tongue of water moving across the equatorial Pacific kind of uh, La Nina conditions will be coming here. And most likely as we go through the summer months here and you can see June, July here to the right. And then we go August, September, October, November on the right. And then we go December and January. You guys get the picture here. La Nina most likely on its way. And if we look at the the European, and this goes all the way back to September 2022, the interesting thing about this is the blue line is what actually occurred. The reds here, those are the ensembles. So you can see for the most part, uh, if we go back all the way back into 2022, you can see that the forecast did work out pretty well. You know, the act, what actually happened fell within the ensemble range. And you can see October here on the right, same thing. Here we go, November 2022, December 2022. So pretty good ensemble agreement. So when we make these forecasts, you know, we have pretty good confidence on what is coming up next. And when we deal with a strong El Nino like this, we tend to drop back down into La Nina conditions. More on that here in a moment as well. Well, now January 2023, again, February, here we go through March and April. You guys are getting the picture here. We go May, June 2023. Here goes July and August. You can see actually August, we were on the low side of things here. We were outside the ensemble range for a bit for what we ended up running into as we went through October and November. But then the forecast came out again, still on the low side here as we went through September and October 2023. Here's November 2023 and December 2023 as well. And we go to January, February, March, April, and we are now in May. And this is the forecast <clears throat> as of May 1st here. And you can see we are likely to drop back down either in neutral conditions or La Nina. It is not a slam dunk just yet. You can see some pretty good ensemble variation here as we move on into uh, the summer months and then on into the fall months here. But you can see for the most part, we should be below normal here across much of the equatorial Pacific. But La Nina is not classified until you hit the magic zero or uh, minus 0 0.5 Celsius temperature range. So if we take a look here at the most recent diagnostic discussion, you can see that we have a 69% chance by August 2024, according to official predictions, and it was put out May 9th here. But right now we are in neutral conditions, inactive, and probably going to be dealing with about a 12-month run there for El Nino. So not a bad run here. You can see we did get up towards the strong category here, just briefly hitting 2.0, but now we're on our downward trend. And this is looking at uh, May 13th. So this is the equatorial Pacific temperatures. And you can really see the below average temperatures creeping up right off the coastline here and moving out towards you know, 120 west to 170 west. This box here is where we measure La Nina versus El Nino conditions. And again, right about 0 0.3 Celsius. So technically in neutral. And uh, again, the upwelling here along the coast. This is an actual 
uh, animation here. I'm just going to let this play out and you guys can guess, kind of see the visualization of that upwelling occurring off the coastline and how it extends out across the Pacific Ocean. So that is where we are now taking a look at below the sea surface. So this is the surface, the top here. And you can see this is depth in meters. We go from 50 to 100 to 300 to 400 meters. And you can see that water coming from east to west and then upwelling along the coast of South America and then eventually spreads out along the surface. And that can change atmospheric conditions across the planet. And if we take a look here again on the right, this is depth in meters. And this is the equatorial temperature here, uh, you know, the water kind of typical that off to the east is a bit warmer here but you can clearly see that we are dealing with some cooler than normal water when you take a look <clears throat> at the anomalies on the left versus what's going on at the actual temperatures here on the right but that definitely putting an end to el nino now, under normal conditions, we have these standard trade winds here, and we tend to build up more of this warmth here across some of the, you know, the eastern Pacific. Actually, this is the western Pacific Ocean out here in the maritime continent, and that's a kind of a typical pattern here. And during La Nina, we enhance these trade winds. During El Nino, we weaken these trade winds, so that convection can get a bit further out across the equatorial Pacific towards the date line, and again, it changes atmospheric patterns around the planet. So this is La Nina. We tend to even have the increased trade winds here. We build up this heat across the maritime continent and the western pacific ocean stronger jet stream comes off of asia and as a result we tend to create this whiplash effect here where we get this high pressure out over the pacific ocean and we get this more variable jet stream out of the northwest so it brings cool weather here and we tend to be, be a bit weather here wetter across the pacific northwest and you can see across from the southwest drier and warmer weather usually but again these don't always play by the book as we learned in 2022 and 2023 now, taking a look at the typical La Nina pattern here again and kind of just highlighting the general rule here is for wetter and cooler across northern portions, which can sometimes include extreme northern California. But again, we don't always play by the rules there. Now, neutral conditions, this is another way to look at it here. You can see the Pacific Walker circula uh, circulation where you get this best convection here under normal conditions off again across the Western Pacific Ocean. And when you go to La Nina, again, you enhance that. So you get even deeper convection out there and you get a stronger grading off of uh, Asia as it comes out into the Western Pacific Ocean. And then you get that whiplash effect where you get ridging downstream and then more of a variable jet stream out of the Northwest into the Pacific Northwest. Now, El Nino conditions is the reverse of this, and this is similar to what we had at times this year where the convection moves out across the equatorial Pacific and out towards the date line and maybe closer to where you know, beam Hawaii here. And this tends to bring more moisture into the state of California, which we ended up being for many areas above average this past uh, fall, winter, and early spring. So how do we know if the walker circulation is starting to show El Nino or La Nina conditions? Well, one way to do it is to look at the Southern Oscillation index. So we take pressure readings here, Darwin, Australia versus Tahiti. So when the pressure is lower here, we kind of think that we're in El Nino conditions. That's at least what the atmosphere is showing. And then the pressure will be higher in Darwin. And of course, uh, again, kind of showing you there with the diagram, but La Nina, con La Nina conditions, tongue twister there, lower pressure is existent here across portions of the Western Pacific. So the turn, Darwin will be lower pressure, Tahiti will be higher. Again, stronger trade winds. The wind wants to move from high to low pressure there. And so those mark the La Nina conditions. Now, if we take a look here, we are actually still negative right now. So still the atmosphere is holding on to some of the El Nino characteristics a little bit here. But you can see the triple dip La Ninos, strongly positive here. And the strong, the super strong El Ninos, definitely into negative territory. And there's the most recent El Nino. You can see it didn't really have as much of an effect on the Southern Oscillation Index as previous El Ninos had. But it was evident there. And you can see last year's triple dip or the third of a triple dip La Nina there as well. And this is what's known as, uh, so this is a moving diagram. This goes all the way back to November 19th here and now we're towards May 12th. So you can see the warmer temperatures across the equatorial Pacific. And if you just drop down from this uh, image here towards the Pacific Ocean, you can see how this lines up. There's South America here. And this is that upwelling. You can see it, it's been emerging really since we've been going through March along the coast of South America there. And that's been creeping out here. And that's what's putting an end to the El Nino that we've been dealing with. 
So another way to look at things here is to check out every strong El Nino has shown here since 1950s. This is 2023 to 2024, and this is what we've been doing here. And you can see it's following that classic path of a strong El Nino and most likely dropping down to La Nina. Not always. I mean, there's always an exception to that rule here, but we're probably looking at neutral or La Nina conditions following a strong El Nino. So another way to talk about this too, I mentioned the stronger jet stream off the coast of Asia moving into the Western Pacific here. And that kind of enhances the Rossby wave action here where we get this high pressure and we get that more variable jet stream again down in the Pacific Ocean here. Now, if we take a look again, the mid-latitude cyclones form along that gradient between the polar and the equatorial regions. So that's what El Nino and La Nina are doing. They are changing the strength of some of those Rossby waves and they change ridging and they can change uh, the atmospheric circulation all the way across the planet at times. And of course, the stronger the mid-latitude cyclone, the stronger the winds, the stronger the gradient, and the stronger the storm. So taking a look here as a general rule one more time, during El Nino, we get warmer than normal here, and we get more of a subtropical jet stream feeding towards the southwest USA, and La Nina is different. Again, with the high blocking pressure out over the Pacific Ocean, a more uh, variable polar jet stream down into western portions of the USA. And now taking a look, this was issued in April. I was trying to wait until they put out the newest one here, but we'll see. I'll probably update here in one of my daily briefings as far as what they issue for May. But for April, we did put out this below average signal here across Pacific Northwest. You can see some above average across the Southwest as well, but also above average precipitation signal. This is December, January, and February here for both temperature and precipitation. So again, January, February, March, you can see the only portion of the lower 48, Washington, Oregon portions of Idaho, and above average signal there as well. And as we head on into February, March, and April, that below normal signal is there also. So interesting stuff for Seattle here. For the 2023 and 2024 season, we only had 0.3 inches of snowfall for a strong El Nino. That's pretty typical here. And the only years with zero snowfall are El Nino years over the last many years. I mean, going way back in our record stores, 1950. But you can see one, two, three, four strong El Ninos. Those were the only years there were El Nino that we had no precipitation in full, uh, no precipitation in the form of snow for SeaTac, I should say. And two of those were just regular El Ninos here. So we did manage to sneak three tenths of an inch out of that here. But with the La Nina incoming here, you can see how we've had some very nice years. But again, not everything plays by the book. You can see some of these La Nina years, you know, had lower snowfall amounts here. But every single La Nina year generally gets some measurable snowfall for the city of Seattle. And some areas can get much more and some years are going to be, you know, you're going to get much more snowfall versus others. But just because you get an El Nino year doesn't mean you can't get some snowfall. This was a weak El Nino. Remember the big snow we had back in February 2019 here. So there's always hope no matter what's coming. And just in case you've heard of this, a Madden-Julian oscillation, this can kind of mimic El Nino versus La Nina conditions. This is the cycle of deep convection that moves around the globe about every 30 to 60 days here. So this can kind of throw some of this deep, deep convection and it constructively interfere with El Nino or La Nina here. And as it moves across the Pacific Ocean and around and across towards Africa and back around, you know, it, it can change up what we're dealing with in the short term. But El Nino and La Nina are more of a seasonal aspect here versus you know the, the month to two month phases you can get with the Madden Julian oscillation. And this kind of shows you what's going on here. You can see uh, this looks like La Nina here with the big blocking ridge of high pressure here, more variable jet stream down into the west coast of North America. And you can kind of see the phases of the deeper convection here and how the teleconnections work. And this looks more like La Nina here when you start to emerge this Madden Julian oscillation convection out over the Pacific Ocean here and you can see the deeper Aleutian low and wetter warmer jet back up into the west coast of North America as well. So anyway, I hope these are beneficial to you guys. We're going to continue to look at this stuff and we'll get a little bit more in depth of what this means as far as some data. Once we get a little bit closer here and we get a little bit better signal on just how potentially strong this uh, La Nina will be upcoming or if we're just going to stay into neutral conditions or, or unless there's some complete monkey wrench thrown into the whole works, maybe we'll stay in some kind of weak El Nino or it'll bounce back, but very unlikely for that. Most likely we're going to be a neutral or 
or La Nina conditions with the high odds being in La Nina. So anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Uh, click like and subscribe. We'll see you in my briefings tomorrow. Uh, I'll pro I have a procedure tomorrow actually as well. So I probably will not do one until the evening here. I just turned 50 recently here. And for those of you who have turned 50 and are getting that procedure at the hospital here, the colonoscopy, you know what that means. I'm getting my first one here. They could kind of go in there and check it out. And I guess if they find anything, they can get to it much quicker versus if you just let it go. And then one day you'll find out you have something you wish you would have got that colonoscopy. So anyway, I probably won't have the briefings out in the morning. So those will probably come out as we go on in as I go into the afternoon hour, I'll see how I'm feeling there. And then I'll probably try to put out a briefing at that point. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Get out there and enjoy the nice weather today and tomorrow. And look forward to those storms kind of rolling back into the Pacific Northwest here. And uh, yeah, so I'll talk to you at some point tomorrow, most likely, if not for sure, the day after.